Despite businesses being closed on Sundays, a plethora of religious holidays, religion courses in public schools, and government-regulated church tax, yes, church tax, Germans are far less likely to attend church regularly and believe in God as described in the Bible than Americans. This was one of the biggest culture shocks that I experienced after I moved here to Germany. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name's Ashton, and along with my husband Jonathan and our son Jack, we're the Black Forest family. Here on our channel, we talk a lot about the differences and similarities between life in the US and life here in Germany. But there's one very specific culture shock that I'm surprised more people aren't talking about, and that's religion. And listen, I'm not here to make a video advocating for one religion over another nor am I using my platform to say that you should or shouldn't be religious. This isn't gonna be that kind of video. But rather, what I wanna to talk to you about today is that the biggest culture shock I've experienced since moving to Germany is just how different a role that religion plays in everyday life and the influence that Christianity specifically has on the contemporary zeitgeist, national and local politics, and everyday behaviors. Now, I might not have grown up in the Bible Belt, but I do come from a very rural farming community with mandatory church on Sundays. A community where attending summer camp was synonymous with vacation Bible school. A community where we prayed on the 50-yard line at Saturday night football games, and a community where there was a little extra emphasis on the phrase, one nation under God, during our daily Pledge of Allegiance. And again, I'm not here to pass judgment today. I'm not going to say whether or not those behaviors were right or wrong. But I will say that sometimes living in America feels like you're living in a bubble. And I really had no idea just how unusual our religious behaviors seem to many Europeans even those right here in Southern Germany, which is arguably the most religious region in this country. So in today's video, we're going to explore just that, religion, specifically Christianity, and just how different the practicing habits are between the United States and Germany. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Like I said earlier, sometimes living in the United States does kind of feel like you're living in a bubble, but that's honestly applicable to most things in life. Geographically, we're a huge country, so it's unsurprising that even today, an estimated 40% of American adults have never left the United States, with 11% never even leaving the state in which they were born. But it goes even further than that. American media and American education tends to be pretty inward looking. We spend a heck of a lot of time talking about society and cultures within our borders, but not a whole heck of a lot of time talking about what happens outside of them. In fact, a reported 68% of Americans can't even identify the leader of our neighbor to the north in Canada. And ultimately, when it comes to things like religion, as an American, I can personally testify to the fact that we just honestly don't have a whole lot of understanding about what religious practices are like in other parts of the world. Growing up in the United States, I thought everybody in the world was as religious as we were in the US. I mean, of course, don't get me wrong, I thought different countries had different majorities and minorities of different religions, but generally speaking, the percent of the population that attended church weekly and would rank religion as being one of the most important pillars of their life and kind of a guiding tenement to their culture and community, well, I thought that was actually pretty similar. And to be fair, the United States does have a religious makeup that's broadly similar to that of many Western European countries. Most people on both sides of the Atlantic say that they're Christian, for example. And at the same time, a substantial share of both the US and Europe say that they are religiously unaffiliated. Roughly a quarter of American adults identify as nuns, 23%. Uh, 
similar actually, in fact, to those shares in Germany at 24% and the United Kingdom at 23%, and honestly, generally other Western European countries as well. But that's pretty much where the similarities end. And again, guys, this was one of the biggest culture shocks that I experienced after I moved here to Germany. U.S. adults, both Christian and unaffiliated, are considerably more religious than their European counterparts by a variety of other measures, according to an analysis of data from Pew Research Center's 2014 U.S. Religious Landscape Study in the United States and a 2017 survey of Western Europeans. For instance, about two-thirds of U.S. Christians pray daily, compared with just a median of 18% of Christians across 15 countries in Europe, including just 9% here in Germany. Almost two-thirds, or 64% of Americans, also attend religious services at least monthly, compared to only 31% of Western Europeans and 24% here in Germany. Also, when looking at all adults, Americans are much more likely than Western Europeans to believe in God as described in the Bible. More than half of Americans, 56%, say that this is the case, according to another survey. This one conducted online by the Pew Research Center in 2017. But what's pretty astounding is that's twice the regional median in Western Europe, at just 27%. In Germany, and honestly, in a lot of Western Europe, while the majority of people do identify as Christian and say that they were baptized, today, many of them do not consider themselves to be religious. In Germany, around 22% of the population are church-attending Christians. But the largest majority, in fact, about half of the entire country, identify as non-practicing Christians. And don't get me wrong, more and more Americans have been identifying as non-practicing or outright non-religious but it's not anywhere near the numbers currently exhibited in Germany. And learning about this difference in religious participation between the U.S. and Germany, well, to be honest, it actually had me a little bit confused at first, because while Germans might not necessarily be as devout as Americans, living in Germany, especially here in Southern Germany, what I can tell you is that from my personal experience, the church still has a very present role in everyday life. When I think back at why I had probably yet wrongly assumed that Germany and much of Europe was equally or even more religious than the United States, you know, that idea was probably influenced by the architectural imagery that I was often shown of Europe. Like many Americans, it's hard to think of Europe without thinking of the grand cathedrals and the powerful role that religion had over many monarchies, shaping both historical events and modern day geographic boundaries. And speaking of those grand cathedrals, those churches aren't actually the only properties that churches own here in Germany. In fact, the Christian churches in Germany are actually playing quite the game of monopoly when it comes to real estate. Assessing the church's wealth is a tricky and tangled business due to their extensive land holdings and reparation payments they receive from the states. The two largest churches in Germany own at least 830,000 hectares of land, or 8,300 square kilometers, or 3,200 square miles. The churches themselves have disclosed tens of thousands of buildings that they each hold in addition to at least 21,100 Protestant and 24,500 Catholic churches. And when examining buildings related to the church's roles in healthcare, education, and charitable work, the Catholic Church has at least 66,000 additional holdings and the Protestant Church a further 50,000. They also lease an undisclosed number of properties to homeowners and businesses nationwide. And you know, interestingly, we actually ran into this when we were first looking at properties to buy when house searching here in Germany. Inevitably, if we would find a house that was actually at a pretty reasonable price, well, that lower price listing for the house was almost always due to the fact that you were only buying the physical structure of the house but not the land the house sits on. It's actually quite common in our area to find homes that are sitting on church lease holdings. It would say in the listing that the lease was guaranteed for like 99 years or something like that, but 
it's just really interesting because this doesn't happen in the United States. Like if I was buying a physical house, you know, like with a foundation and plumbed in to sewer lines and electrical, all of that, all of it, all of it. Like I would of course also buy the property that it sits on. But here in Germany, that's not necessarily the case. So in addition to a mortgage payment, you might also have to pay a monthly lease payment to the church to rent the land your house sits on. But religious organizations also receive money from the land they used to own as well. In Germany, they receive state funds to compensate for property losses dating back to the early 1800s when Napoleon upended the Holy Roman Empire. According to the broadcaster Deutschlandfunk, this amounted to nearly 500 million euros in 2017 and comes from taxpayers, whether they belong to the church or not. But honestly, beyond talking about land ownership or participation in charitable organizations, the other interesting reason I think that churches are actually so present in everyday life here in Germany is because of the seats that German churches are actually granted on advisory board committees across a variety of organizations. There, the churches sit alongside other interest groups such as conservationists, union leaders, and experts from a range of fields in the name of representing an important demographic. For example, the two largest churches have a voice on public broadcasting councils. And given the innumerable supervisory boards across Germany, to be honest, it's nearly impossible to estimate the amount of influence or the number of seats that churches actually hold on these supervisory boards throughout the country. But I also should be a little bit fair here and talk about the fact that churches in the United States, they do hold power and influence. It just tends to be a heck of a lot more indirect. On a very basic level, people who belong to religious institutions in the United States have been statistically shown to be more civically engaged than their secular neighbors. They're more likely to serve on school boards, volunteer at charities, and join clubs. So it's somewhat unsurprising then that Congress has always been overwhelmingly Christian. And roughly nine in 10 representatives or 88% of the current Congress including 99% of Republicans and 78% of Democrats, identify as Christian, according to a January 2021 analysis. And almost all US presidents, including current President Joe Biden, have been Christian. Interestingly, Biden is actually the second Catholic president after President John F. Kennedy. But that being said, the majority of presidents in US history have actually been either Presbyterian or Episcopalian, in case you're counting. And most US presidents have been sworn in with a Bible, and they traditionally seal their oath of office with the phrase, So help you God. So help me God. So help me God. So help me God. So help you God. So help me God. And you know, actually, I think this discussion of presidential candidates and Congress and the inner workings of government, it's a great transition to the last section of this video. As I mentioned earlier, despite being more devout in their religious beliefs, the United States does have a constitutionally mandated separation of church and state. And sure, there are some things that kind of tend to make this line between government and religion seem a little blurry at times. After all, while the US Constitution does not mention God, nearly all state constitutions reference either God or the divine, according to a 2017 analysis. God also appears in the Declaration of Independence, the Pledge of Allegiance, and on our national currency. But there are still hard lines that the US government has put in place to not give preference to one religion over another or to not meddle in the inner workings of religious institutions. For example, the Johnson Amendment limits political activity by religious organizations. And most Americans, around 70%, want churches and other houses of worship to stay out of politics. And the Supreme Court ruled all the way back in 1962 that it is unconstitutional for a teacher to lead a class in prayer at a public school. Now, don't get me wrong. While you're not probably going to see a public school teacher lead a class in prayer here in Germany, 
It is interesting to note that German public schools are allowed to have religion as part of their curriculum. In Article 7, Paragraph 3 of the German Constitution, it states that religious education shall be a part of the curriculum of public school. Now, you can opt out of this class here in Germany, but just the idea that religion would be offered as a standard public school course is something that would receive a huge amount of pushback in the United States. But it goes further than that. Here in Germany, especially in southern Germany, we have a lot more Christian religious holidays that are, in effect, government or bank holidays, where businesses close and schools shut down. Here in Baden-Württemberg, nine of the 12 public holidays are Christian holidays. By contrast, only one out of the 11 federal holidays in the United States are directly related to Christianity. Now, of course, there are interesting exceptions. For one, as a festive season leading up to Shrove Tuesday or Mardi Gras and closing with Ash Wednesday, Carnival or Mardi Gras is actually a legal holiday in Louisiana and in Mobile and Baldwin counties in Alabama. So arguably, you might in some states find one or two more, but those examples are going to be limited. But the other interesting thing that seems to contradict the separation of church and state here in Germany is the notion of church tax or Kirchensteuer. In the United States, tithing or the giving of money as an offering to the church is 100% handled by the individual churches. In the church that I grew up in, the offering basket was passed around immediately after communion and there was the expectation that you should give 10% of your income and this is based on the Old Testament passages in the Bible. But interestingly, according to the most recent data that Barna has published on giving in America, only 12% of evangelical Christians actually tithe. Many other surveys put the average total annual giving by a Christian at less than $1,000 a year. This means that many American Christians spend more on coffee, lawn care services, personal grooming, beauty products, or their hobbies than supporting the Lord's work. However, like I mentioned earlier, here in Germany, tithing is actually handled by the finance authorities in the form of church tax or Kirchensteuer. How much you pay in church tax is going to vary according to your salary and where you live. Like other surcharge taxes, for instance, the solidarity surcharge, it's gonna be based on the amount of income tax you pay minus any child allowances. In Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, your church tax bill amounts to 8% of what you paid in income tax. In other federal states, it's 9%, but it adds up. In 2019, for example, the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church collected a record-breaking 6.76 billion euros and 5.95 billion euros in church tax, respectively. And this right for churches to collect a de facto membership fee in the form of a tax dates all the way back to 1919, when the Weimar Republic introduced the measure to counter the financial aftermath of the separation of church and state. And all this money collected is used to help keep parishes, daycare centers, other religious charitable organizations, and their buildings afloat. And as the finance ministry handles the tax for them, because neither church has the necessary infrastructure for such a massive undertaking, it also receives a neat 3% of the total, which added up to 380 million euros in 2016. But broadly speaking, anyone who's a member of a church listed on your screen collects taxes and is liable to pay the German church tax. There are some exceptions, however, members of other religious communities, including the Orthodox, Baptist, Salvation Army, Jehovah's Witnesses, Muslim, and Buddhist communities are not liable to pay church taxes in Germany. But again, generally speaking, if you are religious and you want to participate in Catholic, Protestant, or Jewish communities and use their facilities, whether that's for a baptism, a wedding, or even a burial, well, they're gonna make sure that you pay your church tax in order to use them. You know, at the end of our videos, I always love to ask the audience a question. And today I actually have a very specific one I wanna ask. 
Well, it's a two-parter. So the first part is that if you're an American watching this video, specifically if you're a Republican, um, I would love to hear your thoughts on the idea of paying a church tax. And the reason I'm calling out Republicans in this question is kind of for two reasons. The first is that generally speaking, the Republican Party aligns itself more closely with Christian values. It's often used as a political platform, whether it's in campaigning or even in just in writing a lot of their policies. But at the same time, the Republican Party historically has also been the party of less government and typically advocating for lower taxes. But in the United States, given that we know that the majority of Americans don't actually tithe the 10% that is asked of them in the Bible, church tax actually could be a really interesting way to actually generate more revenue for churches. So I would be really curious to hear what you think about this. Do you like the idea of a church tax, particularly if it could benefit your local church? Or do you not like the idea that it's the government who's collecting it? I don't know, I just think this is a really interesting concept because again, in the US, we don't have anything even close to this. So I'd be really curious to hear from you as an American on what your thoughts are. But the second question I wanna ask is for our German audience. I've shared numerous times in this video now that religious practices and the differences between the US and Germany has been one of the biggest culture shocks that I experienced because coming from a very rural and conservative part of the US, again, I just didn't realize that our devout religious practices were actually quite unique in the concept of other Western European countries. So from your perspective, as someone on the outside looking in, what do you think of our religious practices? Is this something that you noticed if you've actually visited the United States? Does this actually come up pretty frequently when you think about American stereotypes, when you think about American behaviors, whether that be in everyday community practices or in politics or in media? Anyway, I'm just actually really curious to know what it's like from your perspective looking at my culture and what your thoughts are about this. Anyway, I think we can have a very interesting and productive discussion in the comment section. And you know, of course, religion for a lot of people is a very passionate subject. I think we can keep this very civil and not hurtful or hateful because I would love to learn more from other people and hear their thoughts and feelings and expressions. And I think we can do that in a pretty friendly way. But as always guys, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from the Black Forest family, hit that subscribe button. So I'll see you next Sunday. Cheers.